Hello. So we have just completed the DC biasing uh, portion of our design for our common source amplifier, and now we're going to proceed with the um, AC portion of the design, basically setting the AC characteristics for our circuit. So that will be step number two. Setting my AC characteristics. Or the AC portion of my design. Uh, first thing, I have uh, specific requirements for my voltage gain, input resistance, output resistance. My uh, voltage gain is going to be equal to, since I have source degeneration, it's going to be negative GMRD. Remember that this is a uh, inverting type of amplifier divided by 1 plus GM times RS. I, have a feedback. I want this gain to be negative 10. Um, and so I will have my uh, GM, which I guess I haven't written here, but my GM parameter, I know it's going to be equal to um, 2 times IT divided by the overdrive voltage, or PGS minus VT. That's one of the possible expressions. And so I can calculate the value for my GM in this case as being equal to 2 times 2 milli divided by... Uh, PGS, which I calculated earlier to be 2.12 2.12 minus VT, which is 2 That gives me a transconductance of 33.3 uh, millisiemens or m to the minus 1, however you want to pass it And so I can rewrite my expression for the gain Negative 10 is equal to <coughs> negative GM is 33.3 milli times RT, which is 5K, divided by 1 plus 33.3 milli times RS, which is 1K. Now, when I compute this expression, I'll see that I don't get negative 10. In fact, what I get uh, when I compute that expression is that this is equal to uh, negative 4.85. Uh oh. <laughs> and so um, I'm going to need to alter the value of either my GM or my RD or my RS in order to be able to get the gain that I need. But I want to do that in a way that I don't alter my DC bias points. Um, now, obviously, altering the value of GM is going to have a huge impact on my DC bias point. Um, altering the value for D or RS, I can do without having that much impact. But the value for D, remember, is set uh, so that we will have the right amount of output voltage swing. And so the place where we have uh, more, more wiggle room is going to be the value of RS, increasing the value, um, excuse me, decreasing the value of RS so that my denominator term becomes smaller, so that I don't lose so much gain. Um, and so, in order to accomplish that, I'm going to put here RS, I'm going to have to change RS again, in a way so that I reduce it for purposes of AC calculations, but don't change it for purposes of my DC bias point. So I don't want to change my DC bias point. Um, and so I'm going to use uh, the same trick that I use with my PJT common emitter amplifier, where I'm essentially going to split my source resistor into two series resistances, RS1 and RS2. And I'm going to bypass or partially bypass the source resistance, just the RS2 part of it, uh, with a bypass capacitor. CB or CB source, if you want to call it the source bypass capacitor. Um, and the effect that this will have is for my DC biasing purposes, uh, CBS will be acting as an open circuit, and so my overall source resistance will be the sum of RS1 and RS2, and I want the sum of those two resistances to be equal to 1 kilo ohm, right? 
but for AC purposes, for small signal AC purposes, RS2 will be bypassed by capacitor CBS because CBS for AC purposes will become a short to ground. Um, and a short in parallel with RS2 is just going to be um, an equivalent resistance of a short. And so in essence, what I have is that my gain is being determined not by RS, but by RS1. So with that, I can calculate the right value of RS1 that will give me a gain of negative 10. So if I do that, I get that my RS1 is equal to 470 ohms. Now remember, I need for um, RS1 plus RS2 to be equal to 1 kilo ohm. And so from here I can solve for RS1, which is just going to be 1k minus 470, uh, or 530. Oops. And so I can now uh, say R is 1 is equal to 470 ohms and R is 2 is equal to 530 ohms. Some of the 2 is still 1k, so I keep the same DC bias point, but now I have um, a larger AC gain because I am partially bypassing the source resistance. Alright, um, my R in, which is another one of the uh, AC characteristics, it's going to be set by the parallel combination of R1, R2, and the input resistance looking into the gate of the transistor, uh, which is equal to infinity. And so simply R1 in parallel with R2, as we saw before, which is 1 meg in parallel with 3.85 meg, comes out to be 794 kilo ohms. And so it meets the requirement it needs to be larger than or equal to 400 kilo ohms. And my R hour resistance, which needed to be less than or equal to uh, 5 kilo ohms, is going to be approximately equal to RD, so approximately equal to 5 kilo ohms. So we've met uh, that spec as well. I'm going to say note that little R is equal to infinity, since lambda we assume it is equal to 0. Alright, so those are my characteristics. My gain, Kv is equal to negative 10. My input resistance, 94 kilo ohms. Output resistance, 5 kilo ohms. Um, so they're they're all met so far. Um, my peak to peak output voltage is also met because, uh, as we saw, the 5 kilo ohm resistance uh, sets my drain voltage at 10 volts. Um, and therefore, I have, you know, obviously more than six volts peak to peak, but certainly uh, I'm meeting that requirement. And so that's it for the AC characteristics. The last part of the design is going to be setting the frequency response of the circuit. Thank you.